Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Welcome back. Without further ado, Little Nightmares 2. Developed by Tarsi Studios and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment in 2021, Little Nightmares 2 is a 2.5D platformer puzzle game set in Pale City, a creepy, dark, sadistic world full of different ways to die. You'll play as Mono, a little boy accompanied by Six from the first game who also acts like a bit of a guide. It's a single player game and second in the series, a sequel to the wildly successful Little Nightmares released in 2017 that sold over 5 million copies to date. Little Nightmares 2 is longer, harder, and <laughs> darker than ever before. Mm -hmm. The deluxe edition includes the digital soundtrack, a making of art collection, wallpapers, a set of avatars, as well as the Gnome's Attic DLC shown here. The game is available for Windows, Stadia, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and will be released for the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S later in 2021. For the PC, the requirements remain fairly modest. You'll need Windows 10, a quad-core CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, a GTX 570 or equivalent, and 10 gigs of storage. A GTX 760 or better is recommended. Check the description for more details. Let's look at some of the main aspects of Little Nightmares 2. Puzzles come in a wider variety than in the first game and now include cooperative play between Mono and Six, where you must work together to complete puzzles and defeat obstacles. None of the puzzles are super difficult, but will force you to look way outside the box. While not technically puzzles, there are also many, many ways to die in traps, by falling, or by large items falling and ensuring your untimely demise. Back are the time-limited running portions of the game, where you'll need to run for your life quite often several times over until you figure out the way to safety. Monsters have been changed up quite a bit. No longer do you fight against the disfigured pig people of the first game. Here you'll be running from armed hunters. You'll be battling vicious porcelain school children, long neck freaky teachers, ceiling crawling doctors, hands that resemble something out of the Aliens movies, mannequins and more. There are quite a few different locales to play this time around. Let's have a look. You'll start out in the wilderness, where you'll traverse cabins and the great outdoors, all while avoiding the hunter, who would love nothing more than to put you out of your misery. Next up is the school for orphans. It's full of freaky little bullies and a teacher who loves to lay down the law. The hospital is a place full of oddities, where things take on a life of their own, all of which want to end yours. In Pale City, you'll have to navigate the broken hovels, where television signals have taken over and death is rampant. This rainy land is full of danger, dark, gloomy settings, and transformed people. In the game's fifth chapter, things get even more interesting. If you've ever wanted to check out a haunted maze, look no further because you found one. Things get a little extra twisted here, both in level design and in what's to come. Similarly to the first game, there are several side challenges that provide more reasons to explore the game and provide a little extra fun at the same time. Glitching children can be found throughout the game. Similar to the gnomes in the first game, you'll need to find them and attempt to hug them. You'll also find hats throughout the game. These are collectible items that you can actually wear. After you've found them, you can swap them out any time in the pause menu. A pretty cool touch. Let's talk about graphics. Textures, animations, and scenery all feel much improved from the first game and make for a fantastic looking experience. The game has this surrealistic claymation feel to it and is quite nice to look at. The cutscenes look much like the rest of the game and look great. There were quite a few instances of clipping in the game, but nothing that detracted from the experience. Sound effects and atmospheric noise were all fantastically presented and really helped to immerse you in the game. The music was also quite well done and helped to set the mood. I thought the addition of the piano scene was also a really nice touch. The story itself isn't presented well up front, much like the first game. As you progress, the bits and pieces start to come together nicely. The situations that you're thrown into throughout are all very unique and paint an incredibly interesting picture of the world around you. I won't give too much away, but how this game concludes was something I never would have expected. Many thanks to whoever thought that one up. For the best experience, a gamepad is highly recommended. They'll provide you with much more precise control of both your character and the flashlight when available. As in the first game, some of the controls using the keyboard and mouse are a little janky and imprecise and left me feeling a little more than frustrated at times. There were some changes to how your character crosses over items. You no longer need to have to worry about falling off boards and whatnot. 
the game takes over that worry as you balance your way across, one less frustration. The puzzles can be a little more challenging than the first game, but for the most part, the addition of the second character makes things much more entertaining and fun. Despite the few shortcomings, the game is a hell of a lot of fun to play and I would gladly play through a third game if it was ever released. My first playthrough took about 8 hours to complete. I did some exploring as I went and died quite a few times, but I would expect that to be about normal. This isn't a game that you would likely come back to play over and over again. What you do get is a wonderful experience in a dark and twisted world that you may want to revisit again in a year's time. I really enjoyed my time with Little Nightmares 2, despite a few frustrations here and there. It made me both laugh and cringe at the same time with the many, many ways to die. There were also a handful of unexpected twists and turns throughout that added to the overall experience. If you enjoyed the first one, this really is a no-brainer. For those who love some interesting and challenging puzzles, a change of pace, or are just a little sadistic, this one surely deserves a look. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you made it this far, help us out by hitting the like button, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out.